proud. Nice. Nice. Um, let's talk a little bit about your transition out of the NFL. Um, that was your life for so long. I imagine like your identity. Um, I spent most of my twenties living in Austria, working for Adidas Runtastic. And I did a lot of fitness events in front of thousands of people, these live workout parties, not to the caliber of the NFL, but I remember from myself, like once that was done, it, yeah, everything shut down in COVID. I took that hat off and just transitioned into something different. I remember being like, wait, like, who am I off stage? Like, it was just go, go, go and do, do, do. And then when I took the time to land, I was like, it was like a re getting to know process of who I am now and who I'm becoming. How was that for you? Was it hard to like leave the identity of an NFL player? What was that? kind of journey like and is it still kind of happening because like you mentioned you're fresh off the boat sort of yeah it's, uh, i think it's there's certain things that are are tough to adjust to but i would say um personally you know there's actually while i was playing football you know if i ever met anybody or met people i wouldn't i would never even say that i played football uh you know if i've met people in austin um you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I live half the year in Minnesota. I live here, whatever, for work. And I just leave it at that um, because like for multiple reasons that we can get into later. But I feel like I got so used to um, like not having to like I never talked about playing football that it wasn't like that was the only thing I was known for. And I think I prided myself on being more than just a football player. But oh. it always kind of stays with you like even now being done people they're like this guy played for 12 years like you're still the football guy um and so i think maybe current players get nervous that like after football like they won't have that kind of you know clout around them but it, it's still kind of carry with you for for a long time because it, it is like a special deal um but i would say you know my transition too has been like just really kind of funny interesting things that i miss about football and people always laugh at this because they're like do you miss it and i'm like I mean, yeah, you miss, you know, the, the game and things like that. But there's also a lot of things I don't miss about, like, the stressors of the game. And, you know, going into the season, you're like, shit, I'm about to be in this maze for, like, six months of just working every day, physical, mental exhaustion. And um, so those parts I don't, you know, I don't miss. But I do miss every morning you could go in and there's a full breakfast buffet. You don't have to cook. You don't have to clean. You don't do anything. You just go in there and it's everything you get everything for breakfast. You just put it on your tray. You eat it. You can get like custom omelets, everything, smoothies, already all pre-made and pre-ordered. Uh, and then you just go get in the hot tub and just relax. And then you start your day. So I would say uh, when I got out of football, one of the things I'm like, wait, so I have to I have to cook this and I have to clean this? Like, this is ridiculous. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Real life, Andrew. Insane. Um, I've adjusted since, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of the, the friends I made playing football, they're, they're only just a call or text away. So that kind of like camaraderie of a lot of guys talk about like missing the locker room and things like that. Um, you know, thankful that I also kind of have friends outside of football that kind of give me that same camaraderie and, and, um, locker room feel. And, uh, so I guess, you know, there are some areas that kind of make up for it. I think you you understand when you sign up for this game that there is going to be this time in your life where you have to adjust. It's like, um, you know, realizing that there's gonna, you're not going to really be able to hit that high again. But at the same time, being thankful that you were ever even able to achieve something that high uh, as far as that feeling and that sensation. So something that most people don't get to. So. Uh, you know, I think overall, uh, it's, it's, it is a transition. Um, but I feel like just, you know, the, the people I have around me, some of the business, uh, things that I have going on have kept me busy. I've made the transition, uh, a little bit easier than, than maybe most, but again, you'd have to probably talk to a bunch of different guys and see, see how it is. So. Yeah, I'm sure the, the perspective is subjective. So that breakfast buffet, it reminds me of like, 
being at my favorite nice bougie hotels and you go down for breakfast and the omelet buffet that you mentioned. So yeah, that's really yeah. funny that you said that, but I get it. Yeah. I mean, the, the meal preparation, the wellness, the community. Um, what about like, I'm sure you still train like and work out and I'm sure that never leaves you, but like, what about aggression? Like, you know, I know, I don't know specifically, I know a lot more about baseball positions. I watch a lot of football, so I like know the game, but like, do you ever just like want to run and like smash into someone? Like, how do you get that out? <laughs> no, I don't actually. And when I watch, when I watch football now, I'm like, oh my God, that looks so violent at times. Uh, Ouch. I could never do that. When they put it in that HD slow-mo, it looks way worse than, than what it is. Uh, but I don't, that's another thing. I don't miss any of the contact or anything like that. Uh, I had probably, uh, I had not probably, I had eight surgeries while I played in the NFL. Uh, two of those were on my back. So I, I don't really exercise much anymore. So that is an, an area that okay. it's, uh, hard to kind of get that release. And the way I try to drain myself now is just through, um, you know, through, through the business and, and what I got going on there. Um, and so, yeah, there's just, you know, there's times where I'm like, man, I really would love to go do that, but, uh, I'd probably be like, you know, laid out for about a week or two, just like in pain. So, um, another part of playing the game is that you realize like you, your body might not ever be the same after that, but, uh, in my eyes worth it. So, um, what does life look like for you now? Tell us more about what you're doing in business and like, I know you mentioned spending a lot of time with family, celebrating holidays, like grounding down a little bit more. Yeah, Tell us about yeah. that and what business you're starting and, or that you've started and what you do there. Yeah. So, uh, since being done playing, uh, I went kind of full full-time into brain tree nutrition, uh, the brain health supplement company. Uh, we realized while we were playing, so we started this at the end of my career, but while we were playing, there weren't a lot of safe, efficacious, banned substance free products that uh, we were allowed to take that helped with memory focus and neuroprotection to help with all the repetitive TBIs, concussions, everything like that. Uh, so a co-founder, his mom, uh, is a neurologist and so we brought her onto the team to help kind of formulate everything and then just with uh, our knowledge of uh, nutrition supplementation uh, and just you know going through a very very thorough kind of r&d process and and due diligence on on this area uh, we decided to to make a product uh, to maximize brain health and, and a line of products uh, using uh, neurologist formulated products with ingredients that are backed by human clinical studies. So uh, we wanted to make something and kind of change kind of the stigma on a lot of these dietary supplements. People are often like, oh, it's the Wild West and you can just make whatever. Well, there are times where it is like that. If you're getting something on Amazon that you're, you haven't really thoroughly checked out, that it's made in the USA, that it's made in a GMP certified facility, they could have just taken those ingredients, had it all made in China, it gets shipped to the Amazon warehouse and you're getting it from there. And you have no idea what's in there. Uh, versus uh, all of our products are, are made in the NSF, GMP, FDA registered lab. So that ensures the potency, the accuracy of the dosage and just the, uh, the highest standards for manufacturing practices. Uh, and because it's all here uh, in Austin, we're in the we're in the lab in the facility. We get to see everything from start to finish. Uh, so we basically have eyes on the product throughout the entire process, uh, so that we can give you the purest, uh, most potent uh, product that we can. Uh, and so this kind of brain tree really started, like I said, kind of like an investment. My my co-founder he was done playing. He also went to rise with me, played in the NFL. Uh, is like a master formulator when it comes to supplementation. You can pick up any product on the shelf and hand it to him and he'll be able to tell you basically everything of all the ingredients in there. That's, that's the level that he's at, uh, like mad scientist level. Um, and, um, so, you know, going into the brain health space, it's, um, it's been, it was, you know, my last play of my NFL career, uh, was actually, I got completely knocked out like a really bad concussion. And, you know, just the segue into it made sense because it was, you know, kind of like a, 
it was an investment. Then it kind of became a hobby. And then I you know, I decided to just kind of take over the whole thing and really like take it to the next level where I knew, I knew it could go. Uh, and so that's where I've been spending most of my time uh, on that, just continuing to, you know, improve the company, scale the company, uh, grow it, talk about it, uh, everything that I can, uh, passionate about it, continuing to research new ingredients to help improve people's brain health. I would say that's probably one of the most fun areas of this is that I get to guinea pig and sample all these new ingredients and researching studies on new ingredients. And so uh, I'm learning a lot on multiple fronts on the business side on just brain health uh, as well. Uh, and then outside of that, I started doing a lot of real estate, you know, investing, uh, developing when I was playing. Uh, and, you know, I still do a little bit of that on the side. So that's kind of every now and then I'll just, you know, do my uh, real estate portion. I'll block off some time to look through listings and, and different like potential projects and go check out different projects. Um, if there's any opportunities there, I would say that's probably, I don't know, maybe 10% of my time now. Uh, the other part of my day I will spend uh, with our venture capital groups, fourth and one ventures. So it's an angel group of all NFL athletes and we're changing the way that athletes can invest. And so while I was playing, uh, you know, just your traditional investment opportunities, you get a lot of real estate deals, obviously the stock market, your financial advisor, putting your money into different areas. Uh, and so unless you're an A-list player, you don't really get access to these early stage companies to invest in. They want like the big name guys. But now that we have this group, uh, we've been able to allow accessing, been given access to invest in a lot of these companies. And so um, giving guys the opportunity to, to have control over uh, where they put some of their money and, and something that they actually want to get behind. Um, so I'm an advisor for Fourth and One Ventures. And a lot of what I do there is just trying to use my connections and, and all the guys I know that are still playing in the NFL to you know, say, hey, there's this opportunity that I wish I had while I was playing. If you want to like join this group and get involved, you can learn a lot. Uh, you know, you can get behind brands that you that you want. And, you know, I always tell the guys, you know, instead of getting paid to post someone's product and promote it, like now you own the product, you know. And so uh, that's been a really cool, fun, interesting uh, kind of venture. And then uh, on top of that, I'm also in the middle of planning a wedding. I got engaged. Uh, Congratulations. A month ago. So. Uh, thank you. So that also, uh, I usually spend uh, my Saturday mornings uh, doing some of that and just uh, going through all the different things. So I'm learning a lot on um, wedding planning, business, uh, all of it. So I stay pretty busy. And I guess for the record, we should say it is Saturday morning when we're recording this. Well, maybe a little bit later for you. Yeah. So thank you. And thank your fiance for letting us cut into wedding planning time just a smidge to talk today. I'm very grateful. Oh, yeah. <laughs>